Da, 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 da. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sin and Tonic. Today's story is that of the mashed potato killer. Ooh, uh, you will never look at your dinner the same way again. Let's go. Sin and Quickly before we get into today's story, excuse the ruddy appearance, I have already had some alcoholic beverages and feel a little woo. So we're just going to see how this pans out. It's been a busy week. Today's gin, haven't done this for a while, because I've been having my liqueur, haven't I? And I love, love, love the m and gin liqueur. This week needed the hard stuff. And it's um, cuckoo. So I thought I'd go for that one. I picked it out of the collection because that is how I feel today. Cuckoo. Lush. Without further ado, for today's story we are going to Australia, to a place called Dubbo. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly and I hope that is how it is said because how cool is that? Hang on, Australia. Dubbo. Is it Dubbo? Dubbo? Who knows? Dubbo. But I won't do an accent anymore. I might a couple of times but I'll try to rein it in because I know that I'm a little tipsy. Am I super rosy? Hmm. Who needs blush when you have gin? Who shall we introduce first? Let's introduce Sarah Tarrant and Alois or Alois. Alois, I'm going to call him Alois. I'm sorry if that's incorrect. It's a difficult name to pronounce. I've not heard of it before. Alois Rez. When this couple met, it was a little bit... Hmm, sketchy because Alois was a lot older than Sarah. Sarah was 15 when she met him and he was 23. That is quite a big age gap and well she was a child. The age difference between the couple was the least of Sarah's mother's worries. Alois had also been a member of a really dodgy not very nice gang called the Rebels Outlaw Gang. Say that fast. This gang was a biker gang and they were, they weren't funny. They weren't a joke. This was a serious gang. They, they, mm, all the things that you think of when you think of like a gang, a nasty gang, it, they were that. Carried weapons, carried guns, they would use them. They, yeah, they weren't shy about murder. So if your daughter's boyfriend, who's much older as well, you then find out that he's part of this gang, or was, sorry, was, he was part, he left the gang, but he, still, not ideal. So this did not create a very happy home environment for Sarah and her mum, because they argued about it an awful lot. She really, really didn't approve of Sarah's relationship with Alois, and... Sarah did. Like Sarah just wanted to be with him. She loved him. He was he was everything to her. And so not the outcome that Sarah's mother would have wanted at all. Sarah left home. So this whole thing just pushed Sarah away. And she left home and she ended up living with Alois and his mother. The three of them then lived together. So Alois, his mother Zonia, and Sarah. And when Sarah was nearly 16, I believe, so still 15 years old, she had their first child. They went on to have three more children, so they had four children in total. But it was not a happy, carefree life for the family because you don't leave a gang like the Rebels Outlaw Gang lightly. Basically, think of like a Hollywood movie. You don't leave the gang. No. You know all their like secrets, you, you've you probably seen some terrible things, or you, you definitely know some information if you've been in the gang. I'm guessing they were threatened, because they, they moved around a lot to avoid being found by this gang that he had been in. So in my head, I think, did he leave the gang to be with Sarah? I don't know, I didn't find that out. Possibly. Seems like he left the gang and wanted to settle down. In fact, I did think I read that in my research. I'm so sorry. It's the gin. It is the gin. 
just gonna have to bear with me for this video. They moved around to avoid being found by this gang because they were nasty. Eventually, this is where the family ended up in Dubbo. And this place is a good old trek away from where they started off in Newcastle. So they've, they've moved like 400 miles away. It's a long old way. Also, this is where a Lois was brought up, where he was born and raised. So it was a familiar place for Zonia and she had friends there and also familiar for Alois because that's where he grew up so that's where he spent his childhood so they kind of came back I don't think that was a smart move because if anyone had any brains in that gang you know they would have wouldn't you think oh maybe he's gone home wouldn't you check there anyway that's where they ended up that's where they went when they moved it seems like quite quickly to Dubbo they didn't have a, ha a home. They didn't have a, have a sort of tip. They didn't have an abode. So they stayed with an old family friend called Raymond Roth. So he knew them when they had lived there when Alois was young. Raymond was an old school friend of Zonia's, actually. And his son, he was in his 50s at the time of our story, and his son had actually played out and played football with Alois. So they, they knew each other quite well. Close. Raymond was really happy and welcoming of the family when they moved back, because only two years before, really sadly, he'd lost his wife to cancer. So I think he welcomed the... <sighs> The noise in the house and also having people around probably felt quite lonely after losing his wife and it was something nice to do. He was he was being helpful and he would continue being helpful, very helpful, very helpful, Raymond. Mm -hmm. He got very close with Sarah and he also spent a lot of time with her four children. On returning to Dubbo, Zonia, so Alo Alois's is that how you say it? Alois is. Alois is mum. She rekindled a relationship with somebody called Hamish. What a name. I love that name. Hamish Lowe. During this time, they had found a property and they had moved out of Raymond's house and into their own house. So we have Zonia, Alois, Sarah, their four children. And when Zonia rekindled her relationship with Hamish, he had fallen on really hard times and was really down on his luck and he didn't have anywhere to live. So Zonia was like, oh, come on, move in with us. We've just got this house. Come on, the more the merrier. So a busy household. Also, Raymond, like I said, Raymond was around a lot close with Sarah, always like helping out with the kids. Also, Raymond, Mr Helpful, would potter about the house and do odd jobs. And he was just generally helpful. The four children would begin school and they were settling in quite nicely. The house needed a lot of work doing to it. So it was being renovated, but they didn't have loads of money. So that was being done by the four adults. Is it four? Hamish, Sarah, no, yes, let's do it in order, Hamish and Zonia, coupled up, Sarah and Alois, and Raymond, he would pop in and out, so they were renovating the property, and that was life at this point in the story, that was life, all was not rosy, unlike my cheeks. Sarah started to have concerns about her relationship with Alois. Alois, do it, do it, do I don't know. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Out of the adults, it seemed that he was not really pulling his weight. He was quite lazy and also quite angry and abusive. And this is where it gets a little spicy. Like I said, Sarah and Raymond they were getting close and she started to confide in Raymond about the state of her relationship and tell him all of the ins and outs and her feelings and emotions and they would have quite deep conversations about the whole thing. Raymond would also share his feelings with Sarah because he was very lonely and he'd lost his wife two years before and that was really sad and traumatic and so they, they, they not rekindled, 
because they, they weren't together before Sophie. Can you say they kindled? <sighs> they began a platonic at first relationship, which led to more. This time there was a 27 year age gap. So Sarah's not shy of an age gap, is she? I'm not judging. Ah, bends and needles. This gets me, right? So they start up a romantic, but not sexual yet, relationship. And she starts sending Raymond dirty pickies of herself. Minx, dirty minx. So she'll send these naughty pictures to Raymond. Okay, fair enough. Well, no, I mean, you're with someone else, so naughty. And then in the house, bearing in mind it's a very busy household, isn't it? Right? and children as well. I hope they were at school. But she would then, like, expose herself secretly. Well, not secretly to Raymond. But so she, she'd expose herself to Raymond when other people were in the house, but only he could see. Isn't that... That is ballsy. What would you... How would you explain that away? Cheeky, like, get a... You know, oh. And then someone else walks in. What would you do? Like, oh... I exposed my um, self once, <sighs> maybe this is too much information, Sophie, but to a um, delivery driver. So I had the children at home and I'd been flustered and busy trying to sort something out. And I think one of them had like grabbed onto me. And as I was getting the shopping, I thought, this is unusual. He can't look me in the eye. And he really couldn't. And, I, and he'd been delivering our shopping for a while. So I saw him every week and I was like, oh, have I got something in my mouth? What? And then it started, it was a bit blustery outside, a bit windy. And I thought, oh, I'm a bit chilly. And I looked down, I had bra on. So I wasn't completely exposed, but it was a lacy affair. And my my top, my top was, had been pulled like down and underneath. So I just had my, my boob in a bra but out. The poor guy, literally, he could not make eye contact. And what do you do at that point? Do you just muster through and pretend that you just didn't know? Do you embarrassly tuck yourself away? I can't remember what I did. I think I did. As I turned around to like put something on a shelf, I hoiked myself in. Honestly. Oh. Do you know what? Weirdly, I wasn't even all that embarrassed. What's that about? I think at that point in life, I had no dignity left. <laughs> you do lose all dignity when you have children. I digress. Exposing myself. <sighs> what next? By the March of 2013, they were in a full-blown sexual, romantic, you name it, everything going on affair. Do excuse me, by the way, if I sound a little off. I've had a bit of a cold, so I might be a bit red around there. And yeah, like the, the old throat isn't <clears throat> clear yet. That's why I waited so long to, to film today's video, because I felt off. And what did I do when I felt better? Drank too much. So I'll probably feel awful tomorrow. Gonna do. Sarah and Raymond, they would meet up once or twice a day. You can tell they're new to have sex and they would have they had a meeting spot because obviously they lived at home like I mean I think it's bad enough exposing herself to him in a house full of people but having sex is a different story isn't it like that's not just a cheeky woo flash this is you know well takes a little bit longer so they would meet up and they would go to the um, um like under a bridge so it's hidden classy and near a riverbank I just don't think I could to me that is all I would think of is homeless people being under the bridge I just that there's not anything sexy about that it's sad I'd just be thinking oh this you know this to some people this is like it's not that's not where mm, no no on a riverbank I suppose is romantic but I don't know maybe it's a really idyllic beautiful bridge and I've got it all wrong Sarah began writing love letters to Raymond 
In these letters, she declared her love for Raymond, so she fell hard, and also her desire to marry Raymond. So bearing in mind that she's with Alois and they have four children together and that they have never married, but she would really like to marry Raymond. Raymond would write back and express his love for Sarah and also his desire to be a father to her four children. I bet you can guess what happens next. May of 2013, Sarah finds out that she is... Ding, 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 ding. Pregnant, you guessed it. Raymond, he gives Sarah an ultimatum because now there's a baby involved, it's like, oh, okay, this is serious. Jeez, he's got like an adult son as well. <sighs> anyway, he says to Sarah, you have three weeks. I don't know why he picked three weeks. Why not one week or a month? You might as well pick two and a half weeks. Three weeks, weird, no. Like, was there a date that he was waiting for? Was there something specific going on? Who knows? But three weeks. She had to leave Alois and be with him. Or he would leave her. So, he, you know, he, he laid his cards on the table. Is that how you say it? What do you say? He did that. Alois was not a stupid man. And he was, he was aware of what was going on between Raymond and Sarah. Alois could be physically abusive to Sarah, which is awful. So I feel like I've brushed over that in this whole story, but their relationship was not a good one and they did argue a lot. They argued more and more and more, in fact. And often Alois would be abusive towards Sarah. But on one particular occasion, this abuse was more extreme than usual and he ended up pulling Sarah down the hallway by her hair and it must have frightened her and wobbled her and this was different to what a horrible thing to say but the usual abuse which is just grim and she called or did she text she texted Raymond so she got away from Alois and she got her phone and she texts Raymond and told Raymond to call the police. I don't get that. Why didn't you do it yourself? It just seems a bit game player-y, that, to be honest. Anyway, that's what happened. So he, Raymond, of course he obliged and he was really worried and he loved Sarah. So he got involved and he, he called the police on her behalf and they went to the property. When they arrived, Sarah, in fear, I, I think, and we'll give her the benefit of the doubt because I would hate to not, but I think she was really frightened and she downplayed the whole thing and she did not want to press charges or report anything. And this really embarrassed Raymond because he'd, he'd called the police and got them round and it made it seem like he'd made this big serious thing out of nothing. So he was, he was embarrassed, but he was also really pissed off. This could have been the chance for them to end up being together because if Alois had been arrested great for them they wanted to be together so he thought up until this point I have almost felt or a tiny bit felt sorry for Raymond he lost his wife and that's really sad he was lonely it seems like he really wanted people around and he was more than happy to help <laughs> in more ways than one and we all make mistakes an affair is not great and I'm not condoning it but I, yeah there's a part of me that was a bit like oh Raymond, so helpful, so nice. Mm -mm. And then that all changes now because what? Instead of taking this frustration at the situation with Sarah, you know, oh, that's annoying. Why didn't you tell the police? Anyway, whatever, whatever. He highlighted to Sarah that her three weeks was nearly up. Weird old three weeks. Nearly, nearly gone. And rather than just sort of what do I mean I don't know anything would have been better than what he did he hands her a little bag of crushed up sleeping pills that by the way were his wife's from when she had been alive and she was poorly to help her sleep so he still had a prescription of those so he crushed these sleeping pills up a little bag and he was like oh and not only did he hand them to her and say, oh, you could um, you could sort this out, you know, you could off him. 
not only did he like suggest that, but he also had it all mapped out and planned out because he knew when Zonia, Alois's mum, would be away. He was like, oh, she's got a trip coming up. So he had it all planned out. So he'd really thought about this. This was his solution to the to the situation. Okay. He gave Sarah the dates that Zonia would be away. She was off visiting someone. And he said, all you've got to do is give him these sleeping pills. So lace a drink or lace some food or whatever. Make sure that he's unconscious. And when he is, let me know and I will do the rest. Sonia goes off on her trip. Sarah makes a meal for her and Alois. And she's like, oh, what can I make that I can hide the these crushed up sleeping pills in? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She puts these crushed up sleeping pills in his mashed potato and then what I can't can you imagine that sitting there opposite or next to or whatever looking at that person that you once loved and you had four children with looking at that person scoffing down their mash also why do I care what he had it with but in my head I'm like did they have bangers and mash do other countries have bangers and mash sausages and mash peas and gravy or like what does mash go with in other countries let me know but yeah anyway that's beside the point who cares what he had it with steak who knows he's eating that and she's just sitting there what she think what's going to, like what also what Raymond's just like oh you could off him with this mm. and she's just like okay come on eats all of his meal while she's sitting there watching, scuffing her meal. Also, would it not cross your mind? Like, would you not be like, which plate did I put in? <laughs> Can you imagine? What plate was it? Oh, sorry. Now it is just a waiting game. And all the time that she is waiting for Alois to zonk out, she's texting blimmin' Raymond. She's texting him. Hope he hurries up. Oh gosh, callous, callous. Their plans were almost scuppered because who should turn up at the house but Hamish? So Hamish and his son turn up. That was not in the plan. And Hamish, helpful Hamish, helpful Raymond, but helpful Hamish, he was like, mate, you look bad. You do not look good. Are you okay? Like, can I help you? Do you need to... Like, I don't know, do we need to take you to the hospital? Can you imagine? And he was just like, Alois, he was like, no, I feel I feel rough, but I think it's because I've taken too many pain meds today. Now, he had a bad back, he had a back injury, and he was taking pain medication. So he just thought, he assumed that he'd doubled up and he'd, like, taken too much. On that note, he takes himself off to bed. He's like, I just think I need to sleep this off. Little did he know, at that time... Raymond starts to text Sarah saying, have you turned the security light off? Have you left the front door open, unlocked, you know? All sorted it out, you know, it's all planned out. She's like, yep, 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 checklist, done, done, done. Eventually, at about 2am, Alois is, is out of it, so he's fallen asleep, he's unconscious. As planned, Sarah, she texts Raymond and he's round like a flash. He comes in and he enters into Alois's bedroom. Sarah does not go in, so she says. She is the lookout. In fact, Hamish would later go on to testify that he woke up at some point and she was standing in the bedroom doorway just staring at him. Nothing more said about that, but that's freaky. Would you not get up? Are you okay? What, like what, you literally just, did you close your eyes and just go back to sleep? That's horror film scary. I mean, I'd have, I'd be petrified. I don't know. I find that bizarre. But he, he, he said she was standing in his doorway watching him. After a while, Raymond exits the bedroom with a Lois wrapped in bed sheets and he carries him down to his car. Now, Sarah notices that he's out there for quite a long time. She's like, what is he doing? You know, this is taking ages. I'm paraphrasing. Eventually, Raymond comes back into the house and he's like, Sarah, can you come and help me? 
because he's put Raymond down on the floor, not Raymond, Sophie, a Lois, down on the floor and he can't then lift him back up and put him in the boot. It's not strong enough. So he needs Sarah's help. So she's right involved. She's now moving the body as well. One thing after another. They gathered together a Lois's phone and his tobacco. I took that as well because they wanted it to look like he just got up and left and just disappeared. So they took those things with them. And then Sarah stayed at the house and Raymond drove off in the car with Alois's body in the boot the trunk. The next morning, Sarah woke up as usual and she basically got on with her day as normal. How people do this, I don't know. It just shows a pure lack of remorse, doesn't it? Like she wasn't even off or feeling sick, nothing just carried on. She went to buy bedding to replace the bedding that Raymond had wrapped Alois's body in. Grim. And it wasn't too bizarre that Alois wasn't around. Sometimes he would be gone for a couple of days at a time, he'd take himself off and it wasn't unusual. But after a few days, Hamish, actually, Hamish decided that he was going to text Alois because this was it was it was getting a few days on and he was a bit worried about him now. And after about five days is when Zonia, his mum, started to worry as well. She came back from her trip and she was like, oh, it's, you know, he'd been, he hadn't been seen for five days. And that's when she started making noise about reporting him missing to the police. And Sarah jumped on this. She was like, oh, if anyone's going to report him missing, it's going to be me. So she decides that she will report him missing and who should she take with her but Raymond? Trust the old Raymond. She could look like the worried girlfriend. <sighs> Where is he? I'm so worried about him. <sighs> when she reported him missing, she told the police, you know, they asked some questions, you know, has he been upset? Has he been troubled? Blah, blah, blah. She was like, yes, actually, yes. And she told the police that he had been receiving, th receiving? Yes. Threatening notes from the gang. Do you remember the gang, the rebel outlaw gang she was like actually yeah they've um they've caught up with us and he's been getting threatening notes and he's been very depressed very worried but also we think that they found us because we've got these notes so anything could have happened to him so she was implying that this gang had basically found him and that's what had happened to poor Alois. because of this the police they came to the house and they searched the house and they found his wallet now they found that interesting. They also found it interesting that Alois hadn't reported any of the threats to the police. They started looking into this case a little bit more and what they realised is that back in Newcastle when Alois was worried for his life with this gang he had actually made reports to the police. So they were a bit like they were scratching their head thinking well why did he report this in Newcastle? And why has he not reported this again here? Why Why did he just keep it to himself? Like, that seems weird. You know, bizarre. And the fact that they found his wallet. They found his wallet, but he'd taken his phone and his tobacco. Hmm. Okay, not a stretch, I suppose, if you were going to go somewhere and you weren't planning on buying anything. But most people would take their, their, their those things together, wouldn't they? Wallet, phone, keys, backy, you know. The police questioned Hamish. He'd been in the house the night before he'd gone missing. Raymond and Sarah, because Raymond had come to the police station with Sarah to report a Lois missing. During these interviews, the affair came out. It came out. I, I can't, I haven't written it in my notes as to who let it slip, but one of the three people told the police or it came out about the affair between Raymond and Sarah. Now this piqued the police's interest because they were just like well that's you know w w the minute you can sniff a motive it's like oh what we got here then. With this whiff of a motive in the air the police were like ah uh, we'll be having your phones and they had their phones. What is going on with my hair? Apologies. Don't even know anymore. Feeling like they were on a bit of a roll, the police sent forensics to the house 
oh yeah, it's heating up. They've got their phones, forensics are at the house, and they find out that on the night that he's gone missing, Lois, I apologise, has gone missing, the cameras were turned off. The floodlight was turned off. Suspicious. So they start searching every inch of the driveway because they're like, you know, that makes sense. Let's search this. And they find a drop of blood, just a drop of blood in like a crack in the drive. And it is determined that that blood belongs to Aloise Rez. Things start to piece together quite quickly from here. There is a fisherman, bear with me, Yes, a fisherman, and he's fishing and on the river, and he sees a bed sheet. Now, hats off to this guy, because he said, that's unusual. That is an unusual thing to have in the river. So he tells the police, and they come and get it, and they test it. And what do they find on that sheet? But dog hairs. That's not what you were thinking I was going to say, is it? But guess who has a dog? Raymond. And guess who the hairs belong to? Raymond's dog. It's all coming together. Also, I've just had a thought. I'll save that to later. Famous last words. This is when they then seize Raymond's car. They find the packaging of prescription sleeping pills for Raymond's wife, deceased wife. And with that spray, luminol, they find a hell of a lot of blood evidence in the boot of Raymond's car. And that is then determined that to belong to Alois. It's not looking good for Raymond, is it? Don't forget, they've also got their phones, the pair. So they then find all of the messages that have you turned the light off? Have you turned the security cameras off? Don't forget to open the door. All of that. They find all of that. Oh, I hope he falls asleep soon so we can be together. They then bring them in again. They are questioned again and it isn't long before Sarah just cracks under the pressure and she's like, yeah, I did it. I I, uh, I drugged him with the sleeping pills in his mash. So she confesses to that. She then has a whole bullshit story about, I never thought that he would really kill him. He was only meant to scare him. How can you scare someone when they are asleep? Answer me. Raymond was a no comment guy. No comment. They were both arrested, of course, and they were both charged with murder. At the trial, Raymond was found guilty of premeditated murder and he was sentenced to 32 years in prison with a minimum of 24. Is that right? That was right, I remembered. I'll start. He would appeal his conviction and say that it was too excessive for the crime. And they agreed. The court agreed. But, okay. They then gave him 25 years with a minimum of 18. Either way, I mean, he was in his 50s. So pretty much a, the rest of his life in prison, even with the lesser sentence. Now, with Sarah, she basically got like an insanity plea kind of thing. So she got 10 years with a minimum of 8 it's like a manslaughter sort of charge. We can't forget the baby. She was pregnant. Do you remember? I feel like we skimmed over that. She was pregnant. And that baby was born in police custody. And then that baby was given to Sarah's mum. So not Zonia, Sarah's mum back in Newcastle. Now, I am aware that we are at the very end of this story. And you're thinking, Sophie, uh, what happened to Alois? because normally you have had all the gory details by now and you're like, uh, mm. but all we can assume is that it was a bloody affair, probably a stabbing of some description because they never ever to this day found his body. And the only evidence that they have is the amount of blood that they found in the boot of Raymond's car and the blood drop that was in the driveway. He was wrapped in a sheet, so possibly... Mm. Although there was no talk of any blood evidence found in the bedroom, and you would think that that would be the case if there had been a stabbing. 
It wouldn't just all be confined into the sh sheets, I'm guessing. I don't know. And that, that that will remain unanswered. There was no body, so there was no autopsy. And they've never, ever found his body. And Raymond, to this day, says no comment. So it's just cruel, isn't it? I hate it when they do that. Like, you've been caught, you're in prison, you're going to be there for the rest of your life. Just tell the family, like, so they can have some sort of closure. It must be horrible. Like, I know it's grim, but you would want to know. I would want to know. You'd, you'd want to know what happened to your child, partner, you know, your loved one. I just hate that. They're the worst when they don't say. And Sarah couldn't say because she didn't actually know, apparently. I feel like I can hear animals. Literally scared. This is the trouble with filming in the shed. Cosy. I like it for the most part. But I do get a little scared and it's dark so I have to walk down the garden in the dark <sighs> that is all I have for you I think oh, I, I do apologize if I have forgotten something I think that's oh it's my children so when I said I could hear animals it was actually my children they're in the bathroom I think and they wonder why I drink <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today for another episode of Sin and Tonic. I do hope you can join me next week for a glass, jug, vase, mug, bucket of gin. No idea how this video is going to turn out. All I know is that that's annoying. Oh, this Cardi is the best. It's so soft and beautiful and it's the same on the inside. You know sometimes when they make clothes and on the outside they're really soft and like, ooh, velour whatever mm, velour. and like velvety and oh yeah 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 right but then on the inside it's just polyester lining well that's the bit that touches you I never get that what like I want the soft on my inside whoa on the inside you know what I'm talking about this glorious affair is soft on the inside it's exactly the same and I love it and I needed it today. It's like wearing a hug. I'm not really depressed or anything. I just, it's been a really long couple of weeks. You know when you're just a bit like, like that. It's almost time for bed. Anyway, I could sit and chat all night. Maybe I should do a video like that where I literally just get a glass, sit here and talk rubbish would that even be interesting I don't know you could just sort of like see where it went oh I think a live would be better for that wouldn't it so there's actually like a to and fro I'm not ready for a live yet that is scary but I will do it 100% I'm thinking when I do Patreon I will set up some sort of live Q&A or chit chat I don't like Q&A just feels a bit that's a bit grown up isn't it live q and I think I'll do like a chit chat a live Ginny chit chat yeah just I'll try and think of some fun stuff anyway I'm just rabbiting now I best go I can't hear the animals anymore so hopefully they're calm so I can just go and be Mary Poppins and just tuck them neatly into bed I love you I will miss you until next week and I hope you have a beautiful weekend. Au revoir. Be good, but not too good.